Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm reviewing Airmail by Tony Lopez. Airmail is a game about trying to efficiently build out your postal networks through the, the building of your various flight routes from location from location, from state to state, trying to do so more efficiently than the other players before the game round is up. The game is going to come with two maps in it. You're going to have the United States side, which you see over here, for two to five players. And then the reverse of this, we have the Canadian side for a little bit more interaction for two to three player games for those smaller player counts. In the game, the general idea is a cross well until enough goals are scored, until you have enough bonus goals scored, you're going to be trying to build out your routes, taking actions every single turn you can have two actions two core actions you can take on a turn we'll get to them but general idea of that is you're going to be trying to build out routes on the board in order to have your planes in specific locations so you can drop off and deliver packages do so more efficiently than other players and you'll get points as you go through the game you're basically your, your revenue you're, you're you're gonna earn dollars on the track over here you're gonna have this track over here where you're gonna be moving up your dollar market as you go you're gonna have your technology track over here which indicates how far how many planes you can go ahead and travel at a single time and then you're gonna be trying to build out your planes on this board over here so that you can get those routes in place better than your opponents can. On your turn, you're gonna take one of two main actions. You're either going to ask for a grant, which involves grabbing your plane, moving it onto this pathway, and then going in one of the two directions and grabbing one of the bonus markers. So for example, maybe we move all the way over here and we get to put down two planes of our color anywhere we want on the board. Let's say we go ahead and put one down over here, as well as one over here. Some nice cross-continental lines over there. Additionally, we'll go ahead and grab a permit, either a regular or a special one. And that is the ask for, a gra ask for grant action. Again, you go ahead and move your plane, you take a permit, and that's it. That's your turn. Alternatively, you can go ahead and place down a card on the board and take three operational points with that card. So for example, we can grab this card, place it down on either side. We can either go to this way or that way, moving along the board. In this case, we're moving down over here, which is going to be a yellow zone over here. This can be a yellow matching yellow over here, which means yellow is going to be the operational zone in question. From there, we have three operational points to spend. You can spend a point to go ahead and move up the technology track, so we can go ahead and do that. That doesn't matter which color you're in. You can just go ahead and do that. That's this action here, one time per turn. You can go ahead and deliver a package one time per turn. A package has to be delivered to or from the color in question. So the operational color is yellow. We have to deliver to or from yellow. And then we can put down planes in yellow as well. And lastly, we can take a permit. Those are the actions you can spend your operational points on. The only one that you can do more than once per turn is planes. You can place down as many plane routes as you want on your turn in the operational color. Well, up to three. You have three operational points to spend. And then your other actions can be spent on other things. So for example, a typical turn could be going ahead. We place down our card. And let's say we go ahead and we say we're going to put down two planes. Uh, let's say we put down a plane over here to, uh, let's say, over there and over there. And then we go ahead and make a delivery. We're going to make a delivery to Butt over here from Des Moines all the way to Butt over here. We have to have a, a technology distance of three, which we currently don't have. Let's pretend we do over here. So we have a distance of three over here, and we're delivering from outside the operational color. But inside the operational color, we're going to take a cube of our color, putting it down there, getting this bonus, which lets us put down a plane anywhere. So let's go ahead and grab another cross continental line over here. And then because we used a plane distance of three, we're gonna go ahead and look over here where we're gonna get a dollar on this track over here, as well as either taking a permit from over there or alternatively grabbing one of these express delivery options. Let's go ahead and because we're in yellow so strongly, let's go ahead and grab this one for yellow. And this is gonna be for Wichita, if we deliver to Wichita a package to Wichita by the end of the game, we'll get an extra $3 as well. That is a typical operational turn. You're trying to build out your route, you're trying to make deliveries, you're trying to move up the technology track so you can make further and further deliveries because the, mer the more you move up that technology track, as you get higher and higher, you can see the rewards get higher and higher as well as well as the flexibility that you have gets higher as well because the more planes you can go, the more likely you can go to or from any one location as you're trying to make these deliveries. Now, as the game progresses, more and more planes are gonna be cluttering up the map, which is going to make the whole decision space as far as what you do and how you do it a drop more complicated. We're gonna go ahead and put one of these over here, one of those over there. We're gonna add one here. We're gonna put one of our own planes down to over here, whatnot, and another one, another green over here. And you can see how the lines start to get a bit more cluttered, at which point any delivery from location to location, tracing a route of planes will start requiring higher and higher technology on this track, as well as may use other players' planes, which is good for them because of the fact that they get a dollar for every time you use one of their planes. So building out your planes is very important, both for your own flexibility, as well as to be able to get in the way of other players so they have to use your routes and pay you a commission they might earn three or two dollars on this delivery but they might be paying you one or two along the way which can really help you with those little margins if other players are constantly paying you for those for those victories they're getting 
Now, when you go ahead on a future turn and you try to make a delivery down to Wichita and you try to make a, let's say, a five length delivery, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to Wichita over there. Well, actually, you can't, you have to always go color to color. So you can't go from within yellow to yellow. So maybe we go from over here. Let's grab another plane down here. Maybe we're trying to make a one, two, three, four, five, six delivery down over there. That's going to be great. We'll earn $3. The problem is they're going to also get dollars from using their planes along the way. And then we'll go ahead and drop a cube in Wichita, which will earn us an extra $3 at the end of the game. That's basically what you're doing in the game. You're going to be placing down cards on the table. You're going to be trying to match up the right colors to the right operational zones. As you do so, you're also building up the next spot for someone who's taking a grant and what bonus they're going to get along the way. And then you're trying to spend those operational points to level up your technology, to grab more permits, to place planes down, and to deliver packages as you go through the game. Additionally, the last thing to really cover is the fact that you're going to have these cards. You're going to have these scoring cards along the edge of the board. I don't know how well you can really see them, but let's see. If we move this over here, you can see the well, wrong direction, actually. If we move this over... Well, actually, no, the right direction. If you right over here, you can see that you can see a scoring card over here, as well as further down over here along the edge of the board. As we're coming around the corner, you can see scoring cards as well. As you move around the various corners of the board, you're going to eventually hit these scoring cards. And when you hit these scoring cards, you're going to go ahead and resolve said scoring card and see who gets points for what. So any number of different things over here. Let's take a look at this one over here. This one is you lose two dollars for each division you have not connected to another division exclusively with your routes. So you're going to be losing. Everyone's going to be losing some dollars in the game based on things they did or did not accomplish. You can have various different rewards, either things that, get you, that make you lose points or things that make you gain points for various goals you've accomplished. And it's up to you to keep an eye on which way the cards are moving and what is more likely to score before you have a chance to resolve and deal with it. And that's basically what's going on in airmail. Once another, a number of these scores, goals have been scored, depending on player count, game end will trigger and you add up all your points from your various uh, special deliveries that you have accomplished. You're also gonna get bonus points for accomplishing special deliveries in multiple zones. So if you don't express deliveries in more zones, if we go ahead and show you over here you see this chart over here they'll give you one three six nine or twelve bonus dollars for the more spe express deliveries you've done to specific zones across the board and past that that is airmail Try to play cards, take your actions, get your operational points as efficiently as possible, deliver packages, scoring dollars as you go, level up your technology tracks so you can actually get further and further in the game, and try to score more efficiently than other players by the end of the game. Which brings us to the review, starting off with ease of play. Very easy game to dive into. Rulebook is incredibly easy, very accessible. The overall rules are just that. I mean, it's a very simple game as far as what's going on here. Uh, game time comes in at roughly 60 to 90 minutes, depending on player count. As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, starting off the bat with the creating of a network in this game. This game, you're constantly trying to create a network. You're trying, you're trying to create a network, which you're instinctively you want to kind of build out a line of planes. But that's not always what you want to do in the game, because getting those key points between locations or getting your plane in between other players' planes means you'll constantly get rewarded those peripheral dollars as players start delivering. If I want to, if I want to go ahead and get a seven-length delivery, and I have a length of my seven of my own planes, that gives me a lot of flexibility. But if you're constantly in the way, if other players are constantly in the way of what I'm trying to deliver, I have to go ahead and give them edge points, which can be the difference between winning and losing if you start picking up all those extra points in the game. As well as the fact there's a constant balance and juggling of what you're trying to do on your turn because you always want to do a bit of everything. With three operational points to spend on a turn, there's a kind of an instinct of, well, I'll go ahead and build up three planes because routes are important. I'll go ahead and move up the technology track because moving up the technology track is important. Alternatively, I'll make sure to deliver a package every single turn because ultimately that's where I'll start getting the dollars and the dollars are important because the dollars are how you win the game. Everything you do in the game is important from keeping your actual economy going by making sure you're drawing permits into your hand, from gathering the various express delivery cards because you can get extra chunks of points, giant extra chunks of points. Getting an extra three, two, three, four dollars for an extra delivery is absolutely huge in this game. And that's another thing you're trying to constantly balance. There's a ton of things you're trying to be mindful of. And that's before we even get to the goals that are constantly around every corner, because those goals are important as well as you try to figure out which goals to go for, which ones to prioritize, because you can't always prioritize everything in this game you have to pick and choose where to give your time and attention in the game. And then the grants. The grants are another fun little action because there's a constant trade-off and choice between taking an operational point turn versus a grant turn. The nice thing about the grant turns is it doesn't accelerate the game ending because you're not moving towards a goal. But as you take a grant turn, you're also going to be able to draw back a permit. So you're, getting the, you're generally getting the same economy depending on, depending on which grant option you're taking. You're getting a similar economy of getting roughly three action points towards you, but in a very different way, often with great flexibility. So those grants can be very strong if you time them for the right situation. The balance of everything you're trying to do in this game is just present as you try to slowly build out your network on the board, as you try to get a dominant space in this whole, you know, building out of our airmail system, as you try to be mindful of the various rewards on the spot, these extra little bonus spots will give you extra rewards, but they're also less likely to come up in these express delivery decks because those cards are at the bottom of the deck from the initial preceding of the game setup. And so you're constantly trying to balance all of this as you make the deliveries, score points, and do what you need to do in airmail. 
As far as what I don't like, first of all, I don't love the art. And I like the box art. The box art comes across very nice and thematically. It's a little beige, but I, I do like what the box art is doing. But the game board art does feel very dry. And overall, the art of the cards as well. These cards just uh, very not inspiring as far as the card art. I mean, they, they go for the colors, for the simplicity of the colors, and they have the symbols for colorblind friendliness. But the overall art of the game, the aesthetic of the game, I, to a certain extent, I get what they're going for. But ultimately, it does look a little drab, and I'm not overly in love with the art. Additionally, the mathiness and the AP, the analysis paralysis, does get worse as your technology track goes up. As you start moving into being able to deliver six, seven, eight, or nine in a row, as far as the distance of your train of, of your flights, it starts getting easier and easier for players to take a long time trying to decide that optimal package delivery that's going to score them four dollars try to do so on as on as many of their own planes as possible and then weighing the trade-off against their own express deliveries and trying to find that one perfect connection point as we move along and along the further you go the easier it is to try to play the system and that's something that can slow down the game as you're going through it and so that whole aspect of trying to optimize that perfect turn and get everything done there does get worse as the game progresses towards that that higher technology track towards the end and then lastly the randomness of picking an origin location does feel a little loose in the game. What you're doing in the game is when you're when you're making a delivery, ultimately all you're doing is you're picking an origin and a destination. That's all you're doing. You're picking a where's this package coming from and where's it going to. You do have to make sure that one of those two matches the color of the the operational zone in question, and, and you also have to make sure you can't deliver to the same location twice. So once I have my own cube down here, other players can deliver here, but I cannot. But past that, it's very loose and it's very free, and it feels a little arbitrary. There's no ticket system where you're like trying to connect this location to that location. The express deliveries do vaguely give you a uh, at least a reason to go for certain spots but the the origin location is arbitrary and contributes to the whole mathiness and slowdown aspect as you basically just look around the board and you're like what is going to give me you know what if I start from over here and wind around the board that's gonna be the most efficient location you're kind of just picking any random spot as far as the origin location which can be a little again to make the whole process feel a bit vague as you're trying to uh, build out these connections and come up with the perfect way to score four points per turn as far as I can see others not liking, first of all, the random special deliveries. You can grab special deliveries, like the express deliveries from the from the guards that are exactly something you already have or very close to something you have a route for. Or alternatively, they're off on the edge of the board somewhere and they're hard to get to and you won't be able to get there at all. You trying these cards is definitely going to be luck of the draw as far as which ones work better for you. You do get to choose which zone you're picking from at the very least. You do get to have specific decks that are related to specific zones. But past that, even within a zone, it can still come down to the, the luck of the draw as far as what works well for another person. And then lastly, is taking key transit points from state to state across those lines over there can be an optimal but slightly anticlimactic strategy as far as trying to place your planes on all the interstate connections or as many of them as possible before the game progresses to the, the mid game and people need your spots. As far as final thoughts on airmail, overall I enjoy what airmail is doing and it's one that I enjoyed my first play and then enjoyed more my second play but then the more I played it it started to wear a bit on me. It's a game that takes the ticket to ride formula of going for a board, going for a map, trying to create those routes and those locations and trying to do so in a way that is rewarding and it's one that is fun and there's a lot of fun things about it and then the the choices as far as like that the very first game I played I just tried to build up planes as much as possible trying to think through how I'm going to deal with delivering packages later the problem is you can only deliver one package a turn so by the time you've ramped up your technology track all the way to nine and you have your planes across the board well that's great but now you're delivering only one package a turn and that that realization made me realize I had not been taken as quite as efficient as I approached the game as I thought I was because congratulations I built up my engine but I can't cash in on it fast enough but then as you go through that, as you realize that as you dive into subsequent games, you start trying to make more and more package deliveries and starting to do things as you grow and starting to balance everything else out. There's a lot going on in this game, but it hits a certain point where it gets to a point multiple plays in where you're also just dealing more with the, how can I add this up in a way that gives me the best point return possible? Overall, I enjoy what this game is doing. It is a fun game. If you like games like Ticket to Ride, if you like games that give you this kind of route building system, Airmail is another fun one in the genre, but the combination of the, the, the art and the aesthetic of the game combined with the mathiness and randomness of the locations does mean that this is one that I enjoy but I'm not absolutely in love with. Uh, for me this is a 3 out of 5. I like Airmail, it's fun, it's one that I'm happy to have played but it's not one I'm overly excited to come back to. As far as other game recommendations, first of all Ticket to Ride. If you're looking for a game that gives you that route building in a very rewarding way, Ticket to Ride is always a solid choice and if you're looking for a game that takes a bit of that aspect of utilizing other players routes along the way on the underground is an excellent game that gives you a lot of passenger deliveries where you have to be mindful of which routes you're using and trying to deliver passengers as efficiently as possible from one location to another in any case and until next time i'm alex radcliffe from board game go i hope you enjoyed this video and as always i hope you have a good one